Tom, you were known for the majority of your career as Dr. Tom. What medical school did you graduate from? Well, Dutch, I, I'm not <laughs> sure if you, I, I don't know if you were there in Alabama when. Uh, and, that, and that's where I met you for the first time was in Continental, right? In Alabama. No, it was in Tennessee because I came in for it. I'll tell you the story. You, you don't remember this, I guess, huh? Because I, I showed up for uh, the first night I, I, I got to the Mid-South Coliseum and for Dundee versus Lawler, or Loser Lee Town, and all the heels and baby faces came out and sat on the front row. Yeah. That? Do you remember that? I remember that. Okay. That night, you rode back with me from Memphis to Nashville. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's where I met you the first time, yeah. So so so, but but in Continental, no, I met you the first time in Tennessee. It was it was, okay. uh, yeah. So that's that's where that that. Well, let me ask you another question. You broke your foot or you broke your ankle somewhere, and you were continuing to wrestle. Where was that? Well, I'm, I'm, it was actually in Louisville, Kentucky, when uh, Pat Rose and I were wrestling as the Heavenly Bodies when Dundee was booking. He had just come back from Louisiana. I, yeah. I came back from Portland. I'll tell you the whole story real quick if you have time. It's, just, it's story time <laughs> with Dutch. Uh, oh, we, uh, got all, uh, we got all day. I know, and, and, and James is very good at editing, I'm sure. But, but the <laughs> thing was, uh, I, I came to visit from uh, Portland. In, I came home for Christmas in Houston. Dundee had been booking the rock and roll at midnight. You were there, uh, uh, Terry Taylor and a bunch of other guys. I happened to come to Houston, talk to Bill, and I just said, hey, I've been in Portland for a year. If there's any opening coming up, man, I'd love to come in. <laughs> Realizing they're at the end of the run, like you guys had that huge run and everybody had been popping. And uh, So anyway, Bill <laughs> – <laughs> yeah, I, I know now Now it's on the downslide. So Bill called me because everybody else is leaving, so I, I get in. And um, uh, Bill Watts turned me heel because I, I was I was insane back then. I'm insane now, but it was a different kind of insanity. And uh, Pat, Pat Rose and I, um, we knew each other, but we weren't really a team. Bill just booked us. Because he needed a crew to go to Memphis because he was taking yeah. over the book. And as you know, how that works. And so Pat and I came in and uh, we were working with the Fantastics. We needed a name. And Bobby Fulton's the one that came up and says, why don't you call yourself the Heavenly Bodies? Well, we did. So we worked an angle with the Fantastics and the Fabs. And uh, it was in Louisville, Kentucky. Stan came over and knocked me off the apron. I heard my ankle snap, actually. Mm. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was awesome. And I had to go down those two flights of stairs. Oh, yeah. Louisville. Got back. I didn't know I broke it, but I knew I was hurting. And I was with Billy Travis, Juan Reynosa, Taurus Bulba, yeah. Wendell Cooley. No, was, well, Wendell Cooley and I, he, wouldn't, he didn't ride with us that night, but it was, uh, it was Billy, Taurus Bulba, and myself. But Wendell Cooley, Taurus, Billy Travis and I lived together to days in off Broadley Parkway, that hell hole. And, uh, <laughs> that's so, an so upgrade. That's an upgrade. Was, yeah, it was an upgrade. Well, from the Congress in it was, but <laughs> anyway, uh, so, so, so we, we got beer and did whatever we did, you know, on the way home and got to the hotel. And, uh, I said, can I sleep on the couch tonight? Cause I didn't want to go in the bedroom and all that stuff. So, the next night was Evansville. Somebody taped up my ankle. The next night was Spot Show, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, back to Monday. Then we're back in Louisville the next Tuesday. And my, my foot, my leg had turned black. No, I my remember foot. it. Okay. Well, then Dundee, I remember, came in one of those rooms. So, hey, mate, you want, want to get that checked out? Well, Sherry Martell was our manager at that time. And she, she had a roommate named Tina, who was a nurse. And she said, I'm going to come by the hotel tomorrow, pick you up. And I'm going to take you to the hotel. It won't cost you anything. Tina will get you in and out. Of course, they x-rayed me. She said, yeah, it's broke. They put me in a cast right there. And, of course, back then, if you didn't work, you didn't get paid. And we weren't getting paid a whole hell of a lot back then anyway. <laughs> well, we got so, paid weekly. Weekly. Yeah. We, very, very weekly. weekly. Very yes. weekly. Thank you very much. Hey, try the video, boys. <laughs> anyway, we, uh, um, I'm in the cast. Sherry says, we're going to come get your stuff. And you stay with me and uh, Tina. 
So I came over to their house, and Tina brought a bunch of uh, scrubs from the hospital for me to wear. So I didn't have to wear jeans or anything. They took care of me for about two weeks, and I said, man, I can't live off these guys. They're not making much money either, and they're, they're making me dinner and being very nice and taking care of me. But my dad and a buddy of mine drove up to Nashville so my friend could drive my car back, came back to Houston, and uh, it was like six weeks off. Brad Armstrong called me and said, hey, are you going back to Tennessee when you're well? And I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. He said, how would, you, how would you like to come to Pensacola? And I said, oh, my God, that'd be great. Yeah. And uh, so I went to Pensacola, uh, you know, just getting back in the swing of things. Met Robert Fuller and Jimmy Golden for the first time. And as you know, Dutch, my social skills mm -hmm. back then were, were sorely lacking for whatever reason. I've, I've psychoanalyzed this forever. I can't explain why I was the way I was. <laughs> But, oh, my God, looking back, I know I, I just – it was this, this social ineptness that I had. And uh, Robert and Jimmy, though, knowing – you know how they are. And, oh, my God, and it was just a fun time. It was great. Well, I don't know if you were there during this time or not, but Robert had this friend. Uh, and you know Jody Hamilton, right? Yes. Well, his friend's name was Joe Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And they look similar in, in uh, you know, physique and looks and things like this. They actually, their birthdays were two days apart. And I know this because Jody, the assassin, was held for three days in Puerto Rico because they ran his passport. It was similar and they kind of, and he was, anyway. So Robert's <laughs> friend was riding with Jimmy and Robert to the towns and they get to talking. He wants to be on wrestling. He wants to be involved. So they do the angle where they in Boutwell auditorium where, uh, Dr. Love comes down to ringside. He ties Tommy Rich's feet to the bottom. That was, they, that was the Joe Hamilton. That was a Joe Love. Hamilton, Dr. Okay. Love. Well, so he beat, they beat the hell out of, uh, Robert or, uh, Tommy and Johnny. And then they go to the interview stand with Gordon Solon. And they say, Gordon, this is our cut man right here, Dr. Love. You see what we did to those boys? Ain't nothing going to happen to our pretty faces. We ain't going to get cut up because Dr. Love is here. And nice big picture, Dr. Love on TV. And it's an angle. And, oh, my God, it's on fire. Going to draw millions and all that stuff. And the next week, it's on TV. Saturday afternoon, Sunday morning, Robert gets a call from the FBI saying, hey, who's that guy you were with? <laughs> We've been looking for him. He's on the FBI's uh, 10 most wanted. And nah. Rob said, yeah. Really? Story. Yes, for real. He, you don't, you don't remember this guy. I remember something about it, but well, he, 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 he enjoyed, um, snow in the North pole a lot. Yeah. The devil's yeah. dandruff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and that I got was, it. okay. I got it. I got so it. So that was it. And he was, he was, he was a wanted man. So Robert says, Oh, he's just one of those guys that come around every now and then. So Jimmy and I and Robert, and I think Jerry Stubbs might have been in there too, we're in Robert's van riding to Panama City, and Robert's talking about this angle, and I'm wearing some of the, the uh, scrubs that Tina gave me. And uh, as we stop at the 7-Eleven, get a drink, I get out, and Robert turns around, sees me in those doctor scrubs, and says, boy, you can be our doctor. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the booking decisions that happen on the road. Oh, yeah. Robert, yeah, so I, Robert, Robert was great. <clears throat> and Jimmy, yeah. and you, you couldn't help, but have a good time in continental. Oh my God. Everybody was friendly. Everybody was, was drinking, having a hell of a time. You go to a match sometime, a hundred people out there. Nobody care. We just, let's just go have a good time. Well, I'd ride. And I'd it, ride. it was, it was great. In Pensacola when I was there and you yeah, were there too, but it, it yeah. was very, very fun to work there. I, I, so, I was I would show up really. I'd show up five minutes before bell time, be on first. And can you do 10, go out and do 10, 15, come back. And that was it. Put your boots on, do your stuff, come back and then go home. Yeah. Take off. 